religious liberty and the dignity of everything in life. Because it is essential for everything else we do. You say, well, what about the third thing, the foreign policy? Our, our credo, our first principle, that America is indeed exceptional. That our founders had something that was unique in the world and should be shared with the world. Why? Because it was the best possible hope for a just society. And that we needed to protect this country through strength, through strong defense, and through active involvement in the world. So wait a minute, how does that have to do with these other two issues? Look at Europe. Do you see anybody in Europe who has a strong defense, who has an active role and can play an active role in the world? No. Why? Because they have to spend all their money to support their social welfare system, and they have no money left to protect themselves. You can have a strong defense without strong families and strong communities and strong churches. You can do that. Look at the Soviet Union. Look at Cuba. Look at other dictatorships around the world. You can do that, but your people can't live well. If you want your people to live well, and you have us have to have strong defense, you have to have it one way or the other. You have to have a totalitarian system where all the money spent on, on the military, where the people suffer. Or you have to have a system that is vibrant enough to be able to afford the military that we need to keep us safe and to spread freedom around the world. This all fits together, folks. This idea that we have to be something different won't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense when you, when you consider how all these things work together to make the country the greatest country in the world and how we are the defenders of that. Don't waver. There's an issue right now before us, healthcare, that encapsulates everything I've just talked about. The reason this issue is such a wonderful issue for us to get engaged in, because it demonstrates clearly how the other side wants to rob us of these first principles and make this country into something that is unrecognizable to us today. You look at, at health care. The health care system is broken. I accept that. It doesn't function well. Why? Well, look at how it was developed. It came about after World War II when government wage and price controls forced employers to provide benefits to their employees instead of giving them increases in salaries. And the benefit that was available to do was health care. The government then followed up with tax incentives to be able to help businesses afford this health care. That's how we got an employer-provided system. How did we get Medicare? When people retired from their business, they lost their insurance. So the government had to come in and fill that void. Had we thought, well, wait a minute, why don't we have an individual-based system from the very beginning, and so it doesn't matter whether you have a job or not, we can figure out other ways to help you afford insurance when you get to be 65. We don't have to have a new system where the government comes in and takes it over. All of it was because the government initially perverted a market. And the healthcare system has been on rocky ground ever since. Where are we as a party saying, hey, let's restore the market? Let's, let's create a system where the market can function to provide people. What does things better in America? Markets or government? We all know that. And yet, we don't say that. If you look at the Bacchus bill, the Bacchus bill is going to cover, this is the Senate bill. The Senate bill is going to cover, I forget how many, maybe 10 million more people. You know where the majority of those people are going to be covered? No, it's not the government plan, there isn't any. No, it's not this insurance co-op. Medicaid. It's just a, they're using, it's a big front. It's just, they're just going to expand government health care. SGIP, government health care. Prescription drugs, government health care. Look, we know their agenda, and it is replacing the private sector with the government, and it's apparent to everyone what they're trying to do. And we have to go out with ideas to counter those, not just criticizing what they want to do, but with ideas on how to counter those. On the social side, Barack Obama, it's clear.
clear. Abortion is going to be covered under this. And that's, that's an important characteristic, obviously. Conscience cause protections for, for workers, for healthcare workers. So they don't have to do things that are that are that are uh, not uh, not within their faith to uh, to administer, like admit, like participating in abortions or, or referring for birth control or whatever the case may be. Those things are going to be weak. How do I know that? Because Bush put in strong conscious clause, clause protections a month before he left office, and the first month the bomb was there, he suspended them. And his, and his EEOC has re recommended repealing them or greatly narrowing them. So we know there won't be strong protection. And finally, the whole concept of socialized medicine is a utilitarian model of health. Whereas the private sector, American model, respects the dignity and worth of every single human life. What will happen under socialized medicine is what happened in every country around the world that is adopted. Is that we begin, the government puts on their accounting green eye shape and begins to make decisions about health care based upon the utility of the life that is being served. Look at the look at what you probably saw this story about the VA system. You think, well, that can't happen here. Look at the VA system. The VA system had this flyer that they did for end of life decisions. 76-page workbook that would ask you questions like, well, you know, do you want to you get this care or do you want to sort of end your life, you know, if you're feeling the blues or you're feeling not, you're not, being, you're not feeling like you're contributing. This is, this is the VA. I can tell you as a senator, every, every appropriation cycle, we never gave the VA as much money as they needed. Why? Because we couldn't afford it. Now, if we're going to short veterans, imagine what we're going to do to everybody else when this becomes just a budget item. No, this is a big deal. And what we're talking about here is how people are respected in society. I give the example of, of the Netherlands. Now, everyone knows the Netherlands is one of the most liberal countries in Europe. True, they are. But the Netherlands was the first to pass assisted suicide. The first in the, in the, in the world. Now, as you know, Oregon has followed suit here in this country, and other countries are following suit. But the Netherlands, the Netherlands was the first. You say, well, that's because they were the most liberal. When Nazi Germany occupied all of Europe, only one country's doctors refused to do sterilizations and abortions. One, the Netherlands. It's the only medical society that under...